So, what is the purpose of church? Holy Ghost. We've been reviewing this as part of the new members class, and I wanted to bring it today so that we all have a better understanding of why we're here. Threefold mission of the church is to invite people to the wedding banquet. More on that in a moment. Invite people into the presence of God to be given the opportunity to make the choice to follow Jesus. Next piece is teach. Teach all of, of God's word. That's why I said this is the most important part of service because I spend an awful lot of time up here or down there or over there or teaching God's word so that we are all on the same page of what God's standard is and what standard we are called to live within. The last piece is to raise up that church and send people out into the mission field. And that has been a part that we haven't experienced a lot here at the Connection and something we need to improve upon is raising up mature men and women of God that are ready to go and evangelize into the community. We are seeing the earliest stage of that with these posters behind me uh, as we start learning how to leave the safety of our sanctuary and go into the world. If we categorize, if we're supposed to be doing one-third inviting, one-third teaching, and one-third sending, we spend an awful lot of time here at Connection teaching. God has directed that effort, and I believe that it demonstrates kind of the same pattern that we witness in, in God's Word. In Jesus' ministry and Paul's ministry, to share God's word. Something that the, the prophets certainly were engaged in as well. But it also, where's the on ramp? Where's the invitation? You see, the expectation and oftentimes how the messages on Sunday are framed are. You've already have a relationship with God. Let's help you improve that relationship with God. What about the people that are coming into the back of church and just curious about what this whole Jesus thing is all about? I mentioned at the beginning of, of today's uh, gathering that we are going to create a new believers reception area to help fill that void. That our altar calls over the next few months are going to be emphasizing people making a choice to either renew their, their journey with God after kind of falling asleep for a bit or for beginning their journey for the very first time. So we are shifting our, our focus. There'll still be plenty of teaching, don't you worry. But our focus is let's bring our neighbors in. Let's focus on this part of the mission. Invite a friend who does not have any relationship with God and say, this is the place where you will find your answers. Yep. We were all given an opportunity to follow that on-ramp and make a choice. And we need to make sure that we are doing that as, as part of a well-functioning church. So today's message is, do you know? Do you know that everyone is welcome to the banquet? Did you know that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved? Yep. So this wedding banquet, where do we get this idea of a wedding banquet? Well, it comes from God's word. God clearly depicts Jesus as the bridegroom and we, the church, as the bride. 
So those three categories I just shared with you truly come out of this depiction, and I'll share that with you in a few minutes. Let's turn to Matthew 22, 2. This is Jesus sharing this parable of what the kingdom is like. The kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a king who prepared a great wedding feast for his son. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servants to notify those who were invited. But they all refused to come. Who is Jesus referring to when he says, all those who were invited? He's actually talking about the Israelites, the chosen. Sent his messengers to say, come to my, my father's banquet. And they refused. He said, it's really not a good time for me. Illustration of, of God's grace is found in this next passage. So he sent other servants to tell them. You heard that God is a God of, of many chances. Perhaps our own lives testify to that. It wasn't the first time God reached for us. The second time it took multiple people speaking in our lives. We're like, well, maybe I do need to Check out what's going on with y'all. So he sent other servants to tell them. The feast has been prepared. The bulls and fattened calves have been killed and everything is ready. Come to the banquet. Maybe you misunderstood. Maybe you thought it was this, you know, you had plenty of time. Maybe you never like to be first to the party, and so you played your fool and said, I'll get there eventually. And then God said, no, you have to understand, it's all on the table, it's, it's ready to go. But the guests that he had invited ignored them and went their own way. One to his farm, the other to his business. And worst of all, others seized his messengers and insulted them and killed them. Who were those messengers that God sent to the Israelites? The prophets. Much of your Old Testament is, is God speaking through those prophets, words of, of correction, words of repentance, words, come back to me. And instead of receiving God's word, they not only rode them out on the rail, the prophets were martyred. The king was furious, and he sent out his army to destroy the murderers and burn their town. Before turning to the New Testament over the last few weeks, we spent an awful lot of time in the Old Testament around the Israelites being taken into who's ever drinking the bottle if we can oh it's it's a small baby my small <laughs> grandson thank you <laughs> which one would you prefer he's going to grab my hand for a do we have something soft and quiet you can squeeze it no no um uh, Mr. Larkin, yes, sir. can you get Captain America off of my desk? Captain <laughs> America? This is a Valentine's Day. No, it's an anniversary. He's soft and quiet. So we spent time talking about Jerusalem being taken into captivity by the Babylonians. This is Jesus referring back to that. The cautionary tale of the Israelites opens the door for you and I. 
That's what we celebrate today. The servants are sent out again to everyone. Now go out to the street corners and invite everyone you see. So the servants brought in everyone they could find, good and bad alike, and the banquet hall was filled with guests. We, the church, are purposed to be the banquet hall of our Father. Go and invite them in. Now, do you remember the second mission of the church? Teach. Because it's not enough to come to church. We are actually being delinquent in our duties if we allow both people into God's banquet and never teach them his standards. Wow. Never give them an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and be clothed in his righteousness. So not only do we have to, are we going to be emphasizing for the next several weeks, inviting people in, but also by creating a place for them to ask questions, we're going to emphasize the importance of accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Or, continuing in Jesus' parable, but when the king came in, to meet the guests, he noticed a man who wasn't wearing the proper clothes for a wedding. Friend, he asked, how is it that you are here without wedding clothes? But the man had no reply. How is it you're not clothed in my son's righteousness? I don't know, I just follow people here. They serve a, a lunch. I had some time to kill. Just figured I was. We we can kind of chuckle about it, but Jesus says there's going to be many that come and say we we did all of the things you asked, mm -hmm. and Jesus will say I don't know you. Because you never gave me your heart. You never accepted me as your Lord and Savior. You went to church and did all the churchy things, but you failed to ever ask me in to, to your heart. The king said, Find his hands and his feet and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. We are called to invite everyone and give them the opportunity to come into right relationship with God. And the only way to come into right relationship with God is through Jesus. Amen. One of Jasmine's favorite songs, one of the <laughs> ones that I only ask her to sing occasionally because it goes on for a very long time. There is power in the name of Jesus yeah. to break oh, every yeah. chain, break every chain, break every chain. Yeah. Yeah. Those chains represent <coughs> the ties to this world. We can think of of the heaviest chains, the chains that bind us to sexual immorality, the chains that bind us to addiction and, and, and pride and, and anger. <coughs> but it's all the ways that we are tied into this world and God desires to break us free. So not only is Jesus sharing this message in the Gospel of Matthew, but it is also shared through Revelation, <coughs> which is a, a preview of, of what's to come. So Jesus is giving us a, an understanding of, of this wedding banquet from 
a parable, but he's also giving us the understanding of how it applies to the kingdom in the very last chapter of the very last book of God's Word. Revelation 22. Look, I am coming soon, bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. <coughs> I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. That is a, a, a beautiful message for those who are in firm relationship with God and pursuing Him with everything that we are. That is a <coughs> breaking your boots message for those that are sitting on the fence having yet decided whether to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. Jesus is reminding us that there was a beginning as there will be an end his return will usher in that end. But he also speaks a word of hope. I'm coming soon. Amen. Blessed are those who wash their robes. Mm. Yes. In his righteousness. The proper wedding clothes. They will be permitted to enter through the gates of the city and eat the fruit from the tree of life. Eternity is ours for those who have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Reminder of what is outside, but those who have, have chosen not to be dressed in Jesus' righteousness. Outside the city are dog, the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexual immoral, the murderers, the idol worshippers, and all who love to live a lie. The eternity apart from God. I often mention that why the church exists is for all of those that are living outside of God's kingdom. This is the world. This is the opportunity today to choose to come through the door and live an eternity with him. The spirit and the bride say, come. The spirit, I think we have an understanding, the Holy Spirit working through us. The bride is the church. Our mission is to invite. Come. Let anyone who hears this say, come. Let anyone who is thirsty, come. Let anyone who desires to drink freely from the water of life. This is where we find ourselves. How do we come? How does this work? What does it look like to to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. I've just been showing up to church. I didn't know there was more to it than getting on the bus and being entertained. As I've been speaking about getting up off the bench and getting in the game, this is what I've been asking. For you to make the decision today to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. And it's as simple as this. From Romans 10, 9. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. It's not just the bar. Each and every person that comes through that door should be given an opportunity to make that choice and to make that choice every time we get together. If we don't accomplish anything else, Connections Church, 
but are continuing to offer the opportunity to go out with every bus that God gives us and bring them into the banquet and then train them up to give them an opportunity to, to make this choice, God will smile upon us and I believe bring increase. So we're going to practice today, whether you have the news that you already have given your heart to God, or you are here for the very first time, or you're kind of thinking about it, this is, we're going to practice, and then I'm going to encourage anybody who has questions, not ready to make the leap today, would like to make the leap, but not in such a public forum, whatever the... I'm going to be here in this front classroom as soon as we get, uh, I believe we've got enough table and chairs for this group. We're not as large as we've been over the last few weeks. So everybody gets seated. We'll make sure we've got enough servers and I'm going to be out there in that front room waiting for you. Okay. Even if you are certain that you, God has made a breakthrough, every time that we have a baptism, that room is going to be open to those that have been baptized every time we have a service, that room is going to be open to it. If you have been in right relationship and you're struggling, that room is for you. Okay? We will pray, we will we'll have quiet discussions with one another, I'll even serve you lunch in there if you'd like, to give you every opportunity to make the decision to not show up at a banquet without your wedding clothes on. You've come this far. God has gotten you this far. Let's, Let's go make sure that we're all on the bus. Yeah. So everybody that is here today, I would like you to recite with me what we lovingly call the sinner's prayer. If you are looking to, to minister on the street, and, and help people make that decision outside of the sanctuary. This is something that you can print off and have with you in your Bible. But you need to emphasize to them that these words mean nothing if they're not meaning them. Remember, we just spoke from Romans that if God is after our hearts. Okay, so this is not magic words that we say and then we get to go about our business. This is, Lord, you are welcome here. All right, you ready? I need to hear lots of voices with me today. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust you and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Somebody prayed that for the first time today. I'm going to be back in the back classroom waiting for you. <laughs>